no tip orders, who would take those? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you information of why you should consider no tip orders. I'm also going to give you the breakdown of the pay, both that I got and Uber. And I'm going to wrap up with some Prop 22 information, which just covers drivers in California. My name is Russ. Hello. I've delivered food part-time for four years, so you can learn from my experience. Let's get right into it. No tip orders. Those are crazy, right? Well, it's been my experience that generally you will get bad ratings from customers that don't tip. In general, I can't prove it, but I will say that people are a lot more critical. Anything that goes wrong in that restaurant, they're going to take it out on you. Anything to do with the delivery, whether it's your fault or not, it's going to reflect in your rating. So there is a way to combat that, and I'll link a card up here where you can watch that. The importance of text messages. Build up that bank of positive reviews so that you don't get deactivated for those rare times that customers take out their frustrations on you. An example of this from the order that I did, the first customer messaged me and asked about how long it was going to take. And so I wrote back quickly and just said, they're finishing your drink and then I'll be on my way. So I have noticed that customers that don't tip generally do reach out to a lot more. And that was a huge red flag on Rideshare. If the customer's messaging you before you even show up, you better watch out. And same thing with food delivery. If customers are pestering you before you even get the food and bring it to them, those are red flags as well. In this case, yes, I'd already been at Starbucks for quite a while, so it was natural for someone to ask, what's taking so long? <laughs> now, did I reach out to them and say, sorry for the long wait? Not necessarily because I already knew they weren't tipping, and I thought it really would have been sooner that I would have got the food and been on my way. So, you know, that's something I could have done better on. I could have messaged each of them, but I didn't. Another basic consideration, how do you pay for all these orders, right? As a customer, you're already paying for the food and drinks, you're paying the fees to Uber, and then you're expected to give a tip to the driver, right? Because we're bringing you the food. How can you afford that? I know I personally don't do food delivery very much because it's expensive and I'll just go get it myself. But for those customers, you know, there could be many, many valid reasons and there's no room to get into all that here today. But I can imagine, you know, say that you're disabled, there's something that keeps you from leaving the house or you don't have a car, then I can understand how customers may be relying on these different delivery services to bring them what they need. And maybe if there's not enough money to go around, there's just not enough for a tip because, again, if you're paying a service fee as a customer, wouldn't you assume that that really covers all the things to get the order to you so that a tip is not required? So that could be a reason why some people don't feel the need to tip. And I would imagine that many people realize that if they don't tip, maybe their order's taking longer to get there. So if they're regular customers, they're going to realize that and then increase their tip slowly until they see their orders being picked up quickly and brought to them. So that's another consideration. Another main consideration of why I just can't take no tip orders, I have expenses. I'm not out delivering for fun. Your car is the biggest expense that you have. And so you really need to protect it. I need to make money and you can't do it if people aren't giving you tips. The companies generally don't pay us enough money as it is, so we really rely on those tips. If you're taking no tip orders, then you know, you're hoping that they're going to tip you in cash or in the app later. Again, it's been my experience that just doesn't happen as much as you would think and to make it worthwhile. So you may ask, <laughs> why did I take those orders? Well, I'm going to have a video for you in a couple months with some information. I'm trying to get my acceptance rate up to 100% to see if I get better orders instead of cherry picking and being selective on what I do. So I'll have that for you later. But I digress. We're not going to solve the issue right now. It's a big, complex topic. And you can make many videos and have many discussions on this. So let's move on now to these two specific orders that I took. I had just finished my errands and I saw this order come up on Uber Eats. I really didn't look that closely. I did see, I thought it was one and it was to Starbucks, $6. Sure, I'll do it. It was only like, say, three miles. 
So when I got into those orders, I clearly saw that there were no tips. There were two of them and six dollars. So that told me right there there's no tip on either of them. But you know what? I took the order. I'm committed to doing it and I'm going to finish the order. So where this was challenging is I actually waited 21 minutes at Starbucks because they were very busy. This total trip took me 36 minutes and I drove 2.8 miles. So let's look at the pay that I got from this. I earned a total of 606 with no tips. And let's look at the breakdown here. You can see that the customer paid 1295 and 995 of that was Uber service fee, so that's $3. Customer 2 paid 783 and they had a 477 Uber fee leaving 306. So $3 plus 306. That's right, that was my pay, 606. So let's look at this closer. 606 divided by 36 minutes, that works out to $10 per hour. Is that worth it for me to be doing food delivery at $10 per hour? That's even below minimum wage. And you know what I have expenses, as I've already mentioned, my car, right? So the dollars per mile were good. 606 divided by 2.8, that gives you 216 per mile. That is good. But $10 an hour? Hmm, I don't know about that. So next, let's look at what Uber made out of this. All the fees totaled $20.78. You can see I made $6.06, so Uber made $14.72. When you do the math here, you're going to see that I made 30% of the order and Uber made 70%. So I'm not surprised. The numbers do change for every order. They have a different, however they decide it, that's, that's really not up to us to get involved in. But Uber takes a cut. In this case, they took 70%. You know, they have infrastructure, they have employees, they have executives to pay. So this is where that pay comes from. Now let's look. What if I had only waited at that restaurant for five minutes instead of 21? How would have that changed my pay? 606 divided by 20 minutes, that works out to $18.36 per hour. That's pretty good, right? I always like to make more than that. But you know what, if those customers had just tipped, say, a dollar or two each, that would have made it much higher. And lastly, let's get into Prop 22. I know this doesn't apply to most of you, but it does for those in California. So Prop 22 was a law passed to where we get 120% of minimum wage and you get 30 cents per mile, both of these of engage time. So meaning while you're actively on an order. So in my area, minimum wage is $15.50, add in $3.10, and that works out to $18.60 per hour. That's pretty good, right? And then, of course, the $0.30 cents per mile. So Prop 22, if you look at if I didn't wait on that order, they kind of equaled out even with no tip. So I think in this case, I will get some extra money from Prop 22 on this order, but you wouldn't have if you're not in California. So again, it is something specific to California, and that would change a little bit on the orders you decide to take or not take if you live in California. And now personally, I would be more inclined to take the lower paying orders because I know I'm gonna get that minimum. It would be foolish to turn down free money, right? And actually it's not free, the customers are paying for this. <gasps> so you can see there's many factors in how you select food delivery orders. What about, have you ever considered short trips or what about driving long distances? In this video up here, over the ocean, I share some information on that for your consideration. Again, my name is Russ and please do like the video and like the channel and I'll see you in my next one.